<laughs> I think there's always this kind of like cheer from me because I'm just amazed that I made it. Um, happy Monday, everybody. Yes, it is Monday all day. Um, thank you for joining me for the bright side uh, with me, Aisha Sasei. I am home, still in lockdown. Just finished home with Aisha Sasei on Facebook Live and YouTube. I hope you were watching. If you weren't, please join me Monday through Friday, um, 12 p.m. Pacific. And that is 3 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. GMT. Um, I am going to be talking to the wonderful Mami Ajay. This segment. She's going to be telling me all about life under lockdown, well, sort of lockdown in Ghana, it's just ended. Mami, where are you? Hi! <laughs> I'm good, how are you? I'm good, I'm, I'm good. Okay, that was so dodgy, the way you said that, you went, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, today I'm good, it's been, it's been up and down, you know what? It's something really unique and intense. So it's it's been every day has been different, but today I'm good. Okay, so you know, I you know, when people always say to me, "Do you want the good news or the bad news first?" I always say the bad news, and we'll get to the good news. <laughs> so tell me about the bad days and what those have looked like, and then we'll 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 help we'll head to the mountain top. So yeah. what's, what are the bad days like? The bad days are feeling like the walls are closing in on you and not mm -hmm. knowing to plan for the future because I'm a planner like I like to know what I'm doing for the next three months four months five months what my life is going to be like at the end of the year and not being able to do that because I don't know what's going to happen next month I don't know where yeah. we're going to so the, those days were really tough and just felt you know it just it just felt like the, the walls were closing in it felt mm -hmm. really yeah do you get out of bed on those days or the because like this weekend I was just I, I just lay in bed the whole day. I worked <laughs> But I stayed in my pajamas, like, practically the whole day. People call that, and I was like, I'm in my pajamas. I don't know what to tell you. Right. I do get out of bed, uh, out of bed but I'm, I'm on my couch. Like, <laughs> some days, you need to sit on my couch till 9 to 10 p.m. Thank you. And that's it. <laughs> There's a lot of Netflix binge watching going on in your life. What are you watching? So I realized there were a lot of shows that I have I've never seen, like I've never seen Breaking Bad. Okay. And I, heard, I actually like it. No, I it gives me anxiety, which says a lot more about me. So when I watched Breaking Bad, I watched a couple of episodes, and then I started to just get really anxious. And I thought, I don't need to do this to myself. I, I, I like it was a lot of anxiety, but I liked it. I like I like <laughs> anxiety. It was good. And then I started Stranger Things, which I loved the first season, and then mm -hmm. after that, it was just too sci-fi for me so. okay so you, you now bear in mind you know you do many things but you are an actress and yeah. obviously this is a time where you can't really do that not in a formal setting although technology is changing everything um when i mean does it make you um does it make you hanker to to get back out there as you're you're cooped inside and you're watching all this content I mean, I wonder how it makes you feel. Because people ask me that about watching the news, you know, watching all these networks doing the news in this moment, and I'm stuck at home. Yeah, how does that make you feel? I know this is about me, but how does that No, make no, 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 I mean, it's a conversation. Um, I think um, initially before I started the show, I never felt like, I never felt like I was missing out per se. I mean, doing Home With I Used To Say was really born out of this desire to fill an information gap. Like, I feel like if, if the story of Africa and coronavirus pandemic was being told by global news networks in the full way that it deserves to be, I'd be lying on the couch drinking rosé. I would be just fine. But I felt like there was a gap. And so that's why I got up and washed my face and put lip gloss on. So um, I wasn't hankering after it in that way. Okay. And what about you? Yeah, I've been itching. I've been itching to, to get out there, to create, to be behind the camera, in front of the camera. But I found ways to do that at home. You know, some days I wake up and it's like, I just need to shoot something. I need to write something. I need to put something together. And I do that. It doesn't mean I put it out, but just for my own creative juice to just keep, mm. keep using. I'm definitely itching to get 
back to a space where I can collaborate with people in a physical sense because that's completely different than than doing it online. That's yeah. Different. Are you are you an extrovert? Because I'm learning things. What I mean, I've been having this conversation with people because what some people are decide, uh, discovering is like I'm an extrovert introvert. So mm. I, as much as I like being out and with people, totally fine with this whole being locked down stuff. Totally fine. My introverted side digging it. Where, what about you? I'm an introvert. I've always been an introvert. So I've loved being by myself. That's why. <laughs> but being forced to be <laughs> the last few weeks has, has completely, I feel like now I'm dying to be an extrovert. Like the first thing <laughs> is gather everyone I know for some kind of brunch or energy session. You can't do that. The social distancing. You can't do that. I don't know how many times to tell you people, you can't do that. What is the deal okay. in, in Ghana now with the lockdown being, the partial lockdown being lifted? I mean, you just said you're going to stay in. I, I am going to stay in. Um, I, I'm nervous about going out right now. Um, so for me, I just want to stay in for another week, another two weeks, and just see how things move. I just... I personally just felt like we weren't ready for the lockdown mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but then I have a lot of anxiety just about people, my family, um, how they're going to cope. So I just, I just want to wait and see. I want to wait okay. and see. How is your family doing? Everyone's good. Everyone's good. Staying put, trying to stay safe, staying positive. Yeah. And, and how are you, I mean, you're creating, but there are good days and there are bad days. What does a good day look like? A good day is I wake up and I take a shower first because a bad day, the shower comes up. <laughs> so if I take a shower first. Real talk right here. Real talk. <laughs> um, and then just sort of deciding what I'm going to focus on that day. So I've been writing a film. So, okay, today I'm just going to focus on writing. Um, or today I'm just going to focus on creating some visuals, some aesthetic things that move me. So a good day is just knowing what I'm going to sink my into that day. Mm -hmm. Eating well and not really being in front of the TV so much and avoiding social mm -hmm. media. So just have the same balance that I would have if we weren't cooped up. Yeah, let me bring in some of our, our people who are, are writing in because uh, it's important. They're part of the conversation. We see Sunita Love. We know that person. Um, she's mocking us. Not sure what she's mocking right, right there. Uh, a, Mimise, keeping it 100. I think that's to do with the not bathing. Uh, most of you, how many of you are watching first thing in the morning these days on the lockdown? Don't even lie around um, here. A um, few. Few people. I don't care what anybody says. And then, are you are you cooking? What's you happening know, on the? I've cooked more in the last few weeks than I cooked the entire twenty nineteen. And I don't say that happily. I'm not one of those people that loves to cook. That is not me at all. Funny enough, I would have thought you you you. I would have thought you did like to cook. Oh. Because you're all about like creating a space and a vibe. So I would have thought you like to cook. No, not that I don't. Know. <laughs> Because some people think, you don't no, I know how to cook. I don't like it. I just don't. It doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. But I have literally been cooking every day. Um, I, I've eaten things. I've gone a revo a card revoked, but I had never made the loss. Neither have I. It's okay. okay. It's all right. You're with me. It. I mean, like. I tried it. So I've, I've not had the loss in the last Someone, Nana Memsa, I say, oh, Aisha, don't troll my Ghana sister on cooking too. I'm not trolling people. I'm not. I'm just... I know food always comes up on the bright side, but we're all so, so of, listen, I'm just finding kindred spirits. I'm not trolling. I'm actually going to start a cooking segment on Home with Aisha. I'm going to be cooking with folk. So I'm putting it out there. Yeah, we're going to be live cooking because I need to get some skills in lockdown. Um, so this from Funmania, I'm here in Nigeria and I'm tired of cooking every day too. Hey, sis, I hear you. <laughs> I know, it's a lot. It's a lot going on. What, ha you know, I ask everyone this, what have you learned about yourself so far in lockdown? Wow. Um, I think I always felt like I was an impatient person. 
Um, but what I've learned over the last three weeks is that I have, a, I have an ability to question myself, question why I feel what I feel, and that allows Ooh. me to sort of Huh? Yeah. Tell me more. What does that mean? Tell me more. And give me an example. Share with them. because this bright these bright side segments are, are meant to be real. Like just so this this is a safe space with all the people who are watching. So uh, a quick example is I've been working on creating something, creating a brand, and I spent a whole twenty four hours working on it, building the deck. And then I went onto social media and saw that somebody else was creating something similar. And immediately I sort of went into myself, like, oh my God, I'm doing what I want to do. They've already started, they're so far along. And then I had to really sort of pull myself in and ask myself, why, what is it that I'm actually feeling? Because it's not, there's a lot of things happening and I need to know where this is coming from. And I think it was coming from a bit of fear, mm -hmm. uh, insecurity, um, and then some level of imposter syndrome, not believing uh -huh. that I do it, you know? And I've found that over the past three weeks, I've just had an ability to constantly ask myself, why are you feeling this? Why are you mm -hmm. feeling this? And that mm -hmm. just sort of brings, brings me back to the middle point centers. And I think that that's a really beautiful thing and something that I'm going to definitely try and carry, carry along. This this whole thing of imposter syndrome, and everybody write in on this issue of imposter syndrome. When was the last time you felt it? How do you get over imposter syndrome when you feel it? Um, is that something that you've, you've, you've battled before? I mean, I certainly, I know that even even now, I mean, I'm, I'm old and I still, I still get that. I still get that moment where, you know, I'm, I'm doing certain events and I'm like, should I be doing that? I mean, like, am I, up to doing this or like you know I, I still get it how often do you battle that that feeling I think there was maybe three four years ago it was constant for me like mm -hmm. every time I get into space with other people other people who are talented or doing really well in their field just other people in general I was always questioning why I was in that space like mm -hmm. why why have they asked me to speak? Why have they asked me to do this? And then just over over the, the last few years through community and and really just, you know, sinking into your work and mm. starting to, to believe in yourself and believe in your purpose. Mm -hmm. um, it comes still, but I'm always able to sort of check her at the door. Like, and let me read, yeah, and I want to read this because I think we, we both resonate. Um, Sue, Sue W says, feel it every day, usually brought on by my social media, but realize that my journey is my own. How much does social media play, play a part in, in, in that, in creating this, the constant kind of whir, the, the, the buzz of imposter syndrome in your mind? Social media is a huge part of it. If you're not, I think there's a way that you need to consume social media that is not tied to your app. And it really mm -hmm. involves sort of splitting your your mental um so to say so it is it is a huge part i mean there have been times when social media has triggered me to completely cancel or disregard something that i that i wanted to do really because yeah, 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 yeah. it's just it just it, it feels invalidated by what you how how so in that moment it feels yeah. like this person is a hundred percent better at this yes so they yeah yeah go and carry it and let me go and find my little lane over here, you know? Um, but then again, it really is about having that feeling, consuming that feeling, and then coming back to yourself and be like, but this is, I actually really want to do this. Like, there's a reason why I want to do this. There's a purpose of this. So you have to still go forward and, and create your own lane. Yeah. And I would think, you know, for, for women in particular, you know, in, in fact, I don't know, people write in, tell me, I mean, <clears throat> men, do men get imposter syndrome? Because it's, you know, I'm not saying this to be, to, to kind of start a, a thing here, but I've never heard men talk about imposter syndrome. I've always heard it in the female context. Have you heard, have you heard it in the, in the reverse? I don't think so. But I don't think so. I think men are given the space to have imposter syndrome. I think they, they're giving a lot of tools to tell them that they could do anything. So I think they carry that in, in some way. They're, they, they carry that internally in a way that women don't. So I've never, 
Yeah, Yasmin, um, Yasmin Kitek, who says, defo, not as much as women. Guys, so the guys who are watching, did you guys get imposter syndrome? Because, you know, it's that thing that, that, that's been said, you know, if a man and a woman are approached for a job um, promotion, and um, they may go to a man, this is, you know, anecdotal, but you hear this often at conferences and people like Christine Lagarde once told the story, you, you'd ask a man and say, I want to give you a promotion. And he may not be as experienced and he'll be like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'll figure it out. Right. If you ask a woman, she's more likely to say, they say, but I can even speak for myself. Mm, really? Am I ready? Mm, I'm not really sure. Are you sure? Me? Really? The questioning. So I want to hear from men. I want to hear from men um, if that's something that, um, oh, Mawatu says my younger brother gets imposter syndrome sometimes. Interesting. How old is your younger brother? I think that's interesting to know because I also am interested in age. So social media, does that mean, so how do you consume social media now, right now, particularly now that you're cooped up? Um, I've been consuming a lot of social media because yeah, we still know we're bored out of them. <laughs> um, but for me, the last three weeks, it's been a lot, a lot of Instagrams, um, a, lot, a lot of conversation. Um, and, and I'm a visual person. I like a stack of beauty. So I just really, it, it, it's not who I think I am anymore so much. So I really consume it as, mm. a, as, a, as a spectator completely. You said it's not tied to um, what you do and who you who you are so much. Um, has I, have has your notion of yourself changed? I know you've learned some things, but the whole mummy Ajay, how much has that shifted under lockdown? Over, over oh, since lockdown. Um, I don't think it's changed. I think that before the lockdown, I, I was in a place where I was very buzz and. Mm -hmm. um, clear about who I wanted to be in the future. Um, I, I think built a certain level of confidence and assurance about myself. Obviously, that is sometimes thrown mm -hmm. up. So I don't think that... For everyone, anything, yeah. Yeah. So I don't think any drastic has changed in the last three weeks. Um, if anything, I think I'm actually hearing my voice more. Like, I'm hearing my voice. Oh, that's interesting. Clearer. Yeah, I think so, because I'm so quiet that it's allowed me to be able to just hear the things that I don't, I kind of like, but I don't love, you know, mm. you know, or the things that I kind of want to do, but I don't, you know, it's actually given me a bit of clarity. You know, I would 100% agree about the clarity being brought in by the lockdown. The other thing that I'm getting clarity on, and I want to know for you, is friendships that mm. under lockdown, it's really making you assess your friendships. It's really making you realize those people who you may not have, those friendships you may not have nurtured as well as they deserve to have been, those friendships you might need to leave behind. I mean, where are you in your friendship audit under lockdown? I think, I mean, I wasn't the best of, like, I, I wasn't a great friend before the lockdown. I wasn't Ooh, confessions. Confessions from mommy. I was so. How were you a bad friend? This is time. This is confession time, people. Write in what were you? What were you not great at prior to lockdown? So for you, friendships. What does that mean? I think. Um, I mean, there's so so many friends. Not so many. I have friends that really are my community. Like they come to my rescue. They they empower me. They support. I mean, and even for those people, I was dropping the ball just in communication, you know, like okay. somebody would call, call them back three days later, or like, I was just really terrible. And what I've tried to do in this lockdown is just try and keep up with my mm -hmm. friends a bit more. I feel so one-sided. I think before I used to blame it on being an and just always needing that personal time to rejuvenate but your friends there has to be some reciprocity so I've been i hope mm -hmm. if my friends are like no you feel like i've been better i feel like i've been better people if someone's leslie yeah the boogie said cold 
I think that <laughs> I did, but I mean that's just that's just real talk. I mean it's I think the the people being forced to slow down. I mean I think it's done a world of good. I, I mean I definitely will say that certain people that or maybe that call was to me because there's certainly people now that I'm I'm thinking of you know. Uh, you know, in this moment, um, maybe, maybe not the, the healthiest or the, um, the best relationship to maintain. Like, you know, I am definitely reflecting, reflecting on, on people in my life. And, you know, you need to call every now and then. Mm? What is making you, um, what is making you reassess those friendships? Is it like, have they gone silent during this oh. time? Is it? What yes, is it? it is. So I think, well, I think there is a, an element that, um, first of all, I, I, there's that whole, like, you know who your people are in this moment of crisis, those who reach out, those who maintain contact, and those who've just gone radio silent. I don't think that necessarily, I mean, everyone's going through stuff, so you can't necessarily know what's happening with that there and to cause the silence. But I do think that I'm trying to use this time to be a better person. And I do know those people who support Support positive change versus those people who don't necessarily want to move in that direction and so I think it's a good time to just you know take a look at some of you know some of my friendships okay. so if you don't hear from me you'll get a Christmas card yeah <laughs> be like has she called what which list of <laughs> um but you know it's not that deep i i think that um time to look at where you want to be going in life and what you want to do better you know um and definitely i'm trying to get more balance more kind of um i don't know more stillness all of those things i'm trying to embrace those are you learning any skills Any skills? I, I mean, I'm learning how to. Really, You're learning really how well. to what? Really, really well. <laughs> hey, Uno, Did I get the, 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 the just? Game Uno? Oh, okay. Oh. Um, I, I have a I have a pack somewhere, but I've never opened it. Learn how to I play. I don't know. Uno. Like. <laughs> okay. You know, so you're me, learning how to play. Um, <laughs> In a way, I am. <laughs> um, but I've been taking a writing, um, a script writing course. I've been learning just how to be a better script writer. And just, I've been on so many webinars and Instagram lives, just building your brand, building your business. So I've just taken in a lot of information, great information about how to really sort of set yourself business wise um, as a creative. So, share, because I'm sure there are a lot of creatives here. Um, what's the biggest takeaway from all these webinars about building a brand? I'm trying to use this time to, to teach as well. I think the biggest thing that I've learned is something that I do, but I don't think it's something that I was focused on in the beginning stages of building a brand. But the biggest thing is building a community, like having a community of people connect with who you're sharing with. It really is about, content is really about sharing information, sharing mm -hmm. lessons, sharing skills more than um visuals and i think that i knew that but that became so clear to me like that's how you brand that's how you build a business by connecting with people yeah, yeah. that's really interesting um i think that's really that's i'm, I'm, I'm processing that because i've heard it said before by steve stout uh, who's um like a kind of a marketing um genius um and he's i've, I've heard him speak publicly and he's always said it's about community you don't have a brand you don't have anything if you don't have community and communities are often built on culture and it's a it's, it's what what unites us that's the that's the thread so um i think that's really that's really interesting i mean how do you stay upbeat i mean as you as you take all these webinars as you kind of battle this sense of being on the walls closing in at times how are you managing to stay upbeat what do you, what's your self-talk um, I'm, I'm trying to sort of divide my day. So I have the privilege of having outdoor space. So just going mm -hmm. outside with nature a little bit, 
um, connecting with family, speaking to my mom, and just trying to focus on the things that the goal I had before this happened. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the positive things that I wanted to do before, and knowing that everything's going to be fine, focusing on the positive, on the bright side, um, or being safe, and just just being just being positive, just focusing on the mm. positive side more. Yeah. Are you, are you dating? Because it's really, really I, I'm actually engaged. I just got engaged two months ago. What? 21, so Where was I? I how, did, how did I miss this? I just shared Congratulations. That. Thank you. <laughs> so are you seeing your, are you seeing your, your betrothed? Are they coming around? How is this lockdown working? I'm fascinated by relationships on the lockdown. Sorry, you were breaking up. I missed the question. No, it's, it's, uh, you're getting some congratulations, by the way. Lots of people saying congratulations for your engagement. Franis Art says congrats. Um, Blissy Ogakara says what news. Uh, Tosinka says what news. Yasmin Kateku. I feel like a lot of people didn't know this. Can you tell us where, uh, can you tell us about your, your bow? Because clearly people don't know. We've got really bad audio. Yeah, I mean, I haven't shared it on social. Well, you shared it now, so you might as well dish. <laughs> oh, I've lost your audio as you tell us about your guy. Oh, let's see. Oops. Because I can't hear you. Oh, let's see. I'm wondering, do we need to... Um, can you hear me? You can't hear me. So maybe... I am going to dump out and as you know, you dump out and come back in because I think it might be, it, I'm blaming Ghana. I'm sorry, people. It's probably not Ghana, but jump out and then come back in and I'll let you in and see. Okay. People, Mummy Jack got engaged, right? Did you know? Because I didn't know. I saw her at the end of the year. And she didn't say anything about an impending engagement. So stay here for the tea. We're going to get the details about this engagement. We're such busybodies. Mami Jai. Mami, can you hear me? I could hear, I could hear everything you were saying. I have no details to share. <laughs> you will dish. You will see you in an African house dish. So everybody, people are like, what? Uh, I know, look, you're blushing. It's, this is fantastic. Dish, 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 dish. You got engaged, how? Let's talk about this engagement. Um, <laughs> what? Aisha? Why are you pulling this what? to me? This is my... You can't oh, listen. Oh. You're bringing joy. You're bringing joy to yeah. people. Share the details. We don't have all day. Tell us, how did he propose? He, so I, I kind of knew it was coming. So for, for months and weeks, I've been saying, listen, if you're going to do it, make sure I'm wearing a nice dress and my nails are done. Make sure. <laughs> so I can't make, anything else is not going to do. And then... And um, randomly, one day, I just popped up at his hand. He was traveling, just going to get my passport done. I was looking a mess. And so we were walking out the house, and he's got on one knee, and I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, he's been planning, what? trying to find, find different ways, different friends, and nothing just felt like he's just going to do it now. And I was like, oh, I look ashy. You look ashy. <laughs> this is not... <laughs> But it was, I was at the time, so it was perfect. It was perfect. It was perfect. Really? Sure. 
Ghana's internet is messing up with the tea. I'm not, I'm, I'm not having this. Let's get to the key, well, not, not key, but Makeda is like dying um, that you've mentioned being ashy. Are we talking about ashy hands or ashy feet? How ashy are we talking now? Let's get to the details. She left. Okay, so here's what you missed. If that broke her, she was engaged. She is engaged. Mama got engaged. He'd been planning it, and then suddenly decided enough with the plans and just got down on one knee. This happened about two months ago. Um, so this is not ending until we get all the details. So we're just waiting for her to come back in, and then when she's given us all the details, we'll let her go. Until then, we're holding her hostage. Although she may have gone and she may not be coming back. <laughs> because she's suspiciously dumped out and she's gone. Mami and Jai do not disappear. We want more detail on this engagement. So where are you? So, you know, she just disappeared, people. She just... Uh, seriously, people want deets. Um, Nano, uh, Nano Konami says... Uh, mommy is never ashy. Um, so, <laughs> Sheree is less gist in the comments. Uh, yes, yeah, she probably won't come back. She better come back. We will be waiting for her. She says she's trying to come back. Um, uh, so so Aisha Sunita, stop her. Mommy has disappeared. Dana Lynn North, no, find her. We're searching for Mami Ajay. She's coming back to finish this engagement story, people. She's trying to come back. It won't connect. Okay, let me see if I can find her on this. Let's see. Let's add her and see if this works. I know, Sheree, Sassy Ray, we're trying to get the details about who this guy is. We're all going to get our gillies ready. Mami? Hi. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. okay, good. Let's get back to the story. Yes, yes. You came to share. You came to bring joy. You're sweating. It's hilarious. Listen, your community want to know. Your community want to know who is he? Let's start there. He's actually someone that I've known since I moved to Ghana and we were friends, like great friends. Um, I always thought he was a nice guy. Um, but never really, never thought about him in that way because he was just so nice. No, it's just so, mm. he's just so nice, too nice. Um, but did you ever think he was hot? Yes, 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 he's gorgeous. I always knew that he was gorgeous. I was like, oh, he's really nice too. He's going to make somebody a great partner one day. And then I remember going to his office with a friend of mine. And when we left, she was like, he's such a great guy. And I was like, yeah, he will make someone a great partner one day. And she was like, you're a fool. You are a fool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how did you go from friends? Because people, listen, this is real talk, especially for us singles who are now thinking we're never going to date again, thanks to coronavirus. Thank you, coronavirus. Thank you. That's anyway, Nicole, moving away from my own personal Nicole. pain to... And I how did you go from friend zone to dating zone? Um, this Ghana network. I mean, that's, that's. Ghana network is killing me. I think... Ghana network is killing me, people. Mommy, I know you can hear me. Don't pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> no, this is not the God saying you shouldn't share details. Don't try that. I can interpret what you're just trying to say there. You need to go out and come back in. We're still waiting for you. Out, come back in. We're waiting. Yes. Out to come back in. He was a friend. She thought he was hot. But she didn't see him in that way. What we don't know yet is how they went from friend zone to dating zone. Please, people, send your questions. She, she's so not coming back this time. <laughs> 
send your questions because we want to know how, and this is mainly for tips, how she went from No, Aisha is not engaged. Do not even start that. Uh, How did this become an episode of Oprah? Everyone needs to log off. Everybody is so <laughs> excited. People say, oh, Lord, the network is a kill. <laughs> How did you go from friend zone to... Stop sweating, girl. Like, <laughs> that is ridiculous. Where is my hip show? I'm saying, hold on. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, how did we go from friend zone to, I mean, I, I always knew that he, he liked me. He was interested in me. I, I always felt, felt that, um, he's actually here right now. So he can hear everything. I'm does saying. he want to come in? <laughs> oh, he does not want to come in. Does he want to say no, hi? He, Everybody wants to want see to... him. <laughs> no. All right. No, in that case, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, so how did it happen? I think when my friend said that, it kind of like planted a seed. So I just started sort of opening myself up to the possibility. And then, um, yeah, I think I just, because I became more open, he became more bold. And then one day he just asked me to dinner. And we've been friends for like four or five years. We've never been like on a dinner or anything. It's just like, hey. So he asked me to dinner. I mean, did like, you think it was a date? Or was it clear that it was a date? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. So what did you wear? What did I wear? I can't even remember what I wore. I, I looked nice, though. Just, okay. Just, People want to cute. see him. I just need you to know Aristotle 1993 says, please bring him in. But carry on. So, hey, it's Christo. We want to see him. I love how the audio is dropping. These are the Ghana gods telling me to stop harassing this poor girl. Aisha, now you're pushing it. You're right, Patricia, I'm pushing it. This is too juicy to keep going off. Salon Food Hub. I cannot believe you will not bring him to say hello to us. Okay, so fine. We're gonna try this one last time and then we're gonna jump to the engagement party because we all have plans. So you're gonna go out one more time and we're gonna talk about the engagement party. And where's the ring? Is there a ring? Okay, she's not gonna let us see him. Quite frankly, I think it's a little unfair, particularly for us single gals who are locked up at home for now till eternity. The least you could do is share a, a, an image of him, but baby steps maybe by the end so what other questions do you have someone says restart the whole live uh shall we do that tell her to come off wi-fi it works better and let me see maybe it's my wi-fi as well i should by the lifestyle podcast i should you're doing the lord's work thank you my sister um scroll through mama's instagram for hits let's see let's see because it could be me as well so let me see if it's me Mame. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I just want you to know, people say mm -hmm. I'm doing the Lord's work. I just really? need you to know that. Okay. Yes, you so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> the ring, what's the deal? <gasps> okay, we're gonna need you to, don't just flash it up and flash it down. What kind of foolishness I is that? I say. Hold it up to the thing so we can see it. That's beautiful. I think that's what they call a pet. Is that a pear cut? Pear shape. Hold it still. Makita, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for feeling my pain. I initially, I She's, feel like I'm- Makita's pain. coming on next, so don't worry about her <laughs> and her pain. That is a beautiful <laughs> ring. It is, and we are sending you so much love and so much joy. Um, when's, what's going on now with this engagement party? What are we wearing for it? Where are we going for the party? 
Well, no, no plans yet. We were starting to plan and then COVID happened. So we're just kind of just existing and living our best lives right now. And once it's down, we'll get back to in the middle of that. My brother decided <laughs> to call from Sierra Leone. This is not the time. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll start again when things calm down. Okay, so in terms of wedding plans, is it going to be in Ghana? Yeah, we'll be in Ghana. Um, 2021, 2022? Yeah, 2021, probably. 2021. Dress style, how many in the bridal I, party? I don't know. I don't know. Colors, do we have wedding <laughs> colors yet? No, the gods are really, really person. killing my flow. Uh, lots of earth tones. Earth tones. Yeah, you can hear me. So, okay, I, I feel like, you know, um, I feel like this is a celebration. Like we've got something to look forward to. Invited, not invited, we're all crashing. Everybody on this line, all, everyone on this thread. Oh, I think people saying they want an invite ASAP. Can I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? It's like, someone said it's like pulling teeth. Um, getting, getting information. For, Aisha, let's, Someone's trying to find me a Ghanaian husband. I'm not sure about that, but anyway. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're both going to log out just so that we can say goodbye and come back in. We're both going to go. So everybody stay right there. And then we're going to both come back in so that we can wrap this story in three minutes. We're back. I felt it was absolutely important as this edition of The Bright Side involves a wedding I felt like we couldn't just disappear and not come back and get all the deets. Like you just, you can't do that. We're talking about a wedding. Our mummy Ajay is getting married. So I felt it was absolutely critical for us to log out, come back in, get a few last details about this engagement, about this wedding, and then we can let her go. Cause we've already held a lot longer than we said we would. But you know, some people are just unruly and that would be me. Okay. Mummy, are you there? Uh, mommy, you there? Yes, I have to tell you a story. So when you went off live, because my yeah. fiance was watching this live on his own phone, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm so bad, it's done. He was like, no, 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 she said you guys are coming back. And I was like, no, she didn't. He was like, no, she said that you guys are coming back. <laughs> let, let, let Charlie come and say hello now. No, he's busy. Busy doing what? He's, 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 busy. he's behind you, Charlie. Uh, he's <laughs> come and say hello. He's, he's, he's busy. I know he's, he's laughing busy. there. He thinks I'm a lunatic. <laughs> Chale, come now. <laughs> How are you not? Come, Chale. <laughs> Chale. Chale is busy. All right. So let's talk about this thing very quickly. So, so the wedding next year, your parents, tell me about telling your parents and how excited they were. And we'll let you go in about five minutes. I mean, we're only going to keep you for 30 minutes, but you're the one who dropped the news. You buried the lead. And so that's why we've kept you longer. I did. I did. It's all my fault. Um, yeah, my parents were really excited. Really, really excited. I mean, my mother's been probably waiting for this day since. Aww. Since. <laughs> And now her, her baby's getting married. Were you one of these um, yeah. women who, who had an image of them who's long imagined what their wedding would be like? No, actually for a long time, I just, I never thought I would get married. I, like I always wanted a really great relationship, but I never thought mm -hmm. I would get married because my parents' marriage was just not the best. So I'd never mm -hmm. really... I never really thought about marriage, but I thought about having like a really great companion. Charlie, <laughs> I, I, I heard him there. Fine, yeah. carry on. Yeah, you know so. that you don't control the man. So if he suddenly is hit by the urge to come and say hello to me, no, as I'm offering congratulations for your wedding. Okay. That I, was 
just like perfection. <laughs> People, did you see that? Shelly, Shelly appeared. I called and he appeared. Thank you so, so much. I feel like we have tormented you. For, for, look, look at everybody just sending all these hearts. Everyone is just, everyone is just sending the hearts to you. We are so, so happy for you. Charlie made it. That was just a beautiful moment. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've tormented you for uh, African city. You saw he did it. Oh my God. I, <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. You're perspiring. Even, I, even in, simply dripping in sweat. You know what? He came. I think that is a perfect place to end. We saw him. We are yeah. so happy for you. <laughs> We are so happy for you and we are already saying prayers for joy and happiness and lots of baby mames all over the place. <laughs> and we are just, we're just over the moon. We all need something to, to be joyful about at a time like this. And you gave us a lot of joy. You and Charlie gave us joy. So <laughs> we're going to, we're going to let you go. And um, cool. as you can see, everybody, I can't even go, everybody's sending congratulations oh, to, to you. Hi. There's a lot of love for you. Um, thank you for hanging out with me. I know I held you hostage for, for longer than I'd promised. <laughs> sending you love. Thank you. We're coming back for an episode two in a couple of weeks, just so you know. Be well, my friend. Take care. <laughs> Congratulations, Shelley. See you soon, my darling. Thank you to everyone who joined. Bye. Bye. Be safe all. Bye. <laughs>